This is the definitive guide on how to kill your houseplants. If you struggle to kill your plant after watching this video, then you're doing something seriously wrong. So grab yourself a hot cup of char, park your bum on the sofa and enjoy the video. And subscribe to the channel so that we can catch up to Plant Arena. In return, I'll give you free coupons to watch as many videos on this channel as you like. Hands down, the best and most efficient way to kill your plant is to repeatedly saturate the soil every couple of days. The aim here is to not let the soil dry out at all. You want it to be completely saturated all the time so that the roots begin to rot. And with any luck, this will even awaken dormant fungus living on the roots, massively quickening the process and destroying the roots in no time. You can tell the roots of your plant are rotting because they will be black and mushy and smell disgusting. If you're not seeing a deterioration in your plant within a week, then just simply up the water into every single day. This will really get the rotting process started. Once your plant starts to droop and turn yellow, you know you're well on your way to killing it. The flip side to this, of course, an equally effective method for killing your plant is to seriously dehydrate it. And I'm talking serious neglect here. Forget about your plant for months at a time so that the soil becomes drier than the Sahara Desert. No indoor plant will be able to survive in these conditions, not even succulents and cacti. And I know what you're thinking, these plants store massive amounts of water in their thick leaves, but trust me, this water soon runs out when we don't water them for a long, long time. The leaves shrivel up and die, and the only place for the plant then is the trash, success. A really popular way to kill your plant is to keep it on a south facing window where it gets blasted by direct sunlight all day. Indoor tropical plants hate nothing more than to be left to fend for themselves in the summer sun. They're really not used to this you see. They hail from the forest floor of tropical rainforests where they get protected from the sun by the large surrounding trees so plonking them on a sunny windowsill will scorch the leaves and kill them in no time. They'll also dry out so much quicker from the heat. So coupled with not watering them for weeks, they really will be on a downward spiral. This method is a lot trickier for succulents and cacti, of course, because they actually benefit from direct sun, which leads me onto my next effective method for killing plants. Keeping them in the dark. Seriously, plants absolutely hate this. No plant can live in the dark, no matter what anyone says. I know the tags in shops often say low light conditions, but every one of them on this planet needs some form of sunlight for photosynthesis. They'll need light to convert into energy so they can continue to grow. Keep them in the basement though and we're laughing. They'll droop and turn yellow, and you'll even probably start to see browning on the leaves. The soil will also take an absolute age to dry out because of the lack of warmth from the fact it's basically stopped growing. So carry on watering every few days to make it worse, and you'll have a dead plant in no time. Win. There are so many ways we can rot the roots of our plants, it's unbelievable. The choices are endless. Leave me your favourite methods in the comments. One of my favourites is keeping them in porcelain pots without drainage holes. You really can overwater your plant here. You can essentially keep it in swamp-like conditions. Water it in its pot until the water reaches the top. Whenever the water line dips, then just add some more. The more water, the merrier. Not only will the roots turn to mush, but if you get it right, the central stem will start to rot too. The bottom part of the stem needs to be constantly underwater for it to turn to mush, so keep topping up the pot every couple of days. You need to be really vigilant here. Don't let the water evaporate too much, otherwise you risk delaying the death of your plant. Another fantastic way to rot the roots is by keeping the plant in just soil or compost. You see, soil is really compact. There's very little air pockets, and the secret to effective root rot is a lack of oxygen in the soil. Compost really does the job. You definitely don't want to add anything like perlite to your soil mix. This will lighten it far too much by providing pesky oxygen to the soil and you'll struggle to rot the roots effectively. A big no-no in the plant killing world. Vermiculite could be added though. Vermiculite is fantastic at retaining moisture so coupled with compost, the plant's roots will never dry out. Most folks don't realize the true plant killing potential of fertilizer. Honestly, it's a real game changer. Giving your plant too much food burns the roots 
An unhappy roots means an unhappy plant, perfect. You can do this by either giving it an overdose or by fertilizing every time you water, which should be very often if you're following this guide properly. To be truly effective, it's best to use a synthetic fertilizer like miracle Grow rather than a natural feed like Focus. Burning the roots of your plant with natural fertilizers is really difficult, if not impossible, unless you really go for it. And really going for it would be a massive waste of money when you can just get a good old miracle Grow, Plants really hate it when you give them too much miracle Grow. The more you give it, the merrier. When I talk about giving your plant an overdose, I mean giving it like 10 times the recommended level on the packet. miracle Grow says to use one small capful of granules to one litre of water, but this will do nothing to the plant. My recommendation is to use four large capfuls to one litre of water and use this every time you water your plants. They'll really go into a downward spiral with yellow leaves and weakened stems and will be heading to the trash in no time. The great thing about buying new plants from a big box store is that you never know what's on them. There can be all sorts of bugs and diseases from spider mites to mealybugs to fungus gnats. And if you're in any luck at all, your new plant will have thrips, the most damaging and persistent plant pest going. And how do you make the most of this situation? Nestle your new thrip infested plant among your existing collection. You'll be chucking out plant after plant in no time. Seriously, you'll have nothing left. Thrips love to spread from plant to plant, so adding an infested specimen right in amongst your collection will mean you'll have a plant apocalypse on the scale of The Last of Us in no time. Once the pests are in and taken hold, you really need to just let them do their thing. Don't interfere. Don't let anyone swing by and spray neem oil or pesticides anywhere near them. This will stop the spread in its tracks, slowing down the downfall of the plants dramatically. If you notice any other pest symptoms not related to thrips, then just ignore it and let the carnage ensue. Don't be satisfied with just fungus gnats either. They're pretty harmless to plants. Most folks think they eat the roots, but they really do nothing to establish plants. Your focus should be on thrips, spider mites, and mealybugs. They're the best sap-sucking plant killers out there. Where do the majority of your indoor plants hail from? The tropics. What does this mean? They hate the cold. This gives us tons of opportunities to kill our plants. The boldest of which is simply keeping them out in your snowy garden in the winter. Go out to find them in the spring and I promise you there won't be much plant left. But that's not all though. Plants hate living next to external doors that get opened often. The frequent temperature fluctuations mean that the plant doesn't know whether it's coming or going. And if you're buying one in winter from your local garden center, ask the shop assistant to not bother wrapping it up for transportation home. Doing this is the easiest way to get it off to the worst possible start. I talked about the importance of starving your plants of light and their ability to photosynthesize earlier by placing them in the basement, but you don't really even have to go that far. You can simply leave them in the corner of your room, collecting dust and dirt. This will create a nice coating of grime over the foliage so that it struggles to access natural light. And don't ever clean it. This will just put you back to square one. Unless, of course, you use mayonnaise to clean the leaves. Mayonnaise is plant death gold. I've seen this hack mentioned lots of times online as a way to give leaves a shiny look, but little do they know that all this is doing is clogging the stomata in the leaves, leaving them susceptible to mold and rot issues. So do use mayonnaise to your heart's content. Give the leaves as thick a coating as you can while you're at it. And to really reduce the rate of that all-important airflow around the crown of the plant, you don't want to tidy any fallen debris off the soil line like you've been told to in lots of care guides. Leaving fallen leaves on there reduces airflow and increases fungus and rot risk and it'll be ready for the trash in no time. If you're in the business of actually keeping your plants happy and thriving, then why not check out this video here next?